Howdy my totally as always tubular gamers we're back with you guessed it another video thanks for coming back to the channel if you're new here maybe stick around for a while I got a fun video for you today we're going to be talking about some underappreciated games specifically we're going to be talking about some modern underappreciated games games that came out within the last 10 years that I don't believe have gotten enough love call them underrated call them hidden gems call them under the radar I'm calling them underappreciated. I think these games are better than what the general consensus is, whether that's from critics, commercially, from the fans even. I think all of these games are good to great and they just didn't get enough attention, enough of the spotlight, and so here I am trying to give them that spotlight. As always, please let me know down below if you think these games are underappreciated, maybe some that I didn't mention. I'm always on the hunt for new games. Some people have recommended me some fantastic games in the past, so all comments are welcome. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. I got the Patreon and the Super Thanks as well. I do want to give a shout out to Alerxes. Thank you for the Patreon support. I really do appreciate it. But enough of all that. Finally, a quick intro. Let's get into it. What's the first game? Our first game is Immortals Phoenix Rising, which came out in 2020. Now, I remember when this game got announced, I remember when it was called Gods and Monsters eventually changed, and then when it released, I actually did get it at release, and I think it was a lot better than what people gave it credit for. They just immediately wrote it off as Ubisoft, Knockoff, Zelda, Breath of the Wild, who cares? And this game was way more than that. Sure, it did share some similarities with Breath of the Wild, you know, the art style isn't crazy different from it or Genshin. And the structure of the game isn't the most original, but outside of that, I think this game is really its own beast entirely, and I think it's actually pretty good. It's one of Ubisoft's best open world games in the last, I'd say, decade, and most people probably don't even know that. While so many other Ubisoft games feel cookie cutter and stale and bloated, Immortals Phoenix Rising actually felt different and somewhat unique from the average Ubisoft game. It certainly has a unique premise taking place during Greek mythology, it's about Phoenix, this mortal who's trying to rescue his brother and stop the evil Typhon from ruining everything. He escaped the underworld and yeah, they're trying to send him back. He'll meet up with various Greek mythology characters and gods. The story's actually narrated by Prometheus, which is pretty cool. And I think the story's actually all right. Is it the most memorable thing on the planet? Is it as memorable as the God of War games? Absolutely not, but I still think it's decent enough. I like the narration. The game's got its quirky moments. It's even got a decent sense of humor. It's not award-winning stuff, but I think the writing, the story, the characters, and the world are decent enough. When it comes to the gameplay, yeah, it is this massive open world you get to explore right from the get-go. You can explore really any part of this open world immediately, and you have a decent move set for this world as well. You can basically fly around anywhere. I mean, it's a glide, but you can essentially fly, you can climb, you can ride mounts, and as you play through the game, you unlock more and more abilities. When it comes to the combat, it's actually totally different from Breath of the Wild. It kind of plays more like a traditional hack and slash with a light and heavy you can even use some range weapons and yeah you do get some abilities the combat is actually pretty decent in this game is it the most advanced combat you'll find no but i think it's satisfying enough it's got a good loop and fighting the enemies is relatively fun there's even some boss fights in there that are pretty good some of them might even give you some trouble but generally speaking yes the combat is solid when you're exploring around this map you find various platforming challenges and puzzles and i thought solving these was decent enough as well well. I like the game's art style. I think it does look unique and it runs incredibly well also. I played it on the PS5 back when the PS5 was brand new and I think even nowadays the game still looks pretty good. A lot of people just didn't really give this game the time of day. I mean it came out the end of 2020 which was a massive year for games and Ubisoft themselves had literally just released two massive open world AAA games with Watch Dogs Legion and Assassin's Creed Valhalla and this game it just fell by the wayside which sucks because I would much rather play this game than Watch Dogs Legion or Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This game has more charm, personality, the open world's better, it's not bloated beyond belief, you can finish it in 15 to 20 hours, and it's just a more enjoyable experience. I thought we were going to get a sequel, but it doesn't seem likely now, which is a shame. If you're looking for a decent to good open world game that has solid combat puzzles and a nice art style, I think this one might be worth checking out. Most people haven't tried it, and it's better than most Ubisoft open world games. And so our next game is The Evil Within 2, which was developed by Tango Gameworks, who unfortunately were shut down earlier this year, but one of their best games really was The Evil Within 2. I also got this at release because I was really excited for it. I actually thoroughly enjoyed the first Evil Within. I thought that game was super underrated. It could be on a list like this, but I'm choosing the second one since I do think it is a little better. 
I certainly think it's a bit better when it comes to the game's story, characters, and where it goes with its narrative where Sebastian willingly goes into the machine in the simulation to go look for his daughter, and I think the way everything progresses is a lot more satisfying than the first game where you just kinda don't know what the hell's going on, and don't get me wrong, I love the first game's narrative just how weird and all over the place it is, but I like the more focused nature of the second game's story, and I do think the characters are generally stronger. I think the game plays stronger as well, it's not super super linear like the first game, you're dropped into these like open areas, they're not open worlds, they're just more open areas that you can actually explore, complete with side objectives and secrets, and this game has a pretty decent sense of exploration, there's actually some good rewards, you can find some really good shit, I remember when I found the sniper rifle like almost at the beginning of the game because I just went and explored, like that was pretty cool, I think the level design is actually good in this game, I think it's also scary, the first game is scary and has plenty of scary intense moments, but this game, it got me a lot more, there's some actually really startling and disturbing set pieces and they are decently spaced out from each other unlike the first game where it just kind of feels like a roller coaster at times where it's just one tense or scary thing after the next and I think the well paced horror game. I think the survival elements are well done also like you don't always have a ton of ammo you actually really will be scrounging around the entire game which is how it was in the first game as well and I thought that was one of the best aspects of the first game is that they made you really hang on to and be careful with the ammunition they gave you. You didn't have just a ton of ammo. You couldn't just mow everything down. No, you had to be a little careful. And the same goes for the second game, even with the more open structure. And along with all of this, the game is a really good presentation. It still looks good nowadays. The voice acting is solid. There's some decent music in there. Yeah, the presentation's just really swell. Is it the most refined, scariest horror game on the market? Is it going to give Resident Evil 2 or 4 Remake a run for its money? No, it's not going to do that, but I still think it is a very good horror game that just didn't get enough attention. I think a lot of people weren't huge on the first one, so they kind of ignored the second one. And that's a real shame because I would say this is one of the best modern horror games around. It's also not a remake, it's a completely original game from start to finish, which is nice. And I think that if you like horror games, especially action horror games or maybe third person horror games, you should totally check it out. The game's mad cheap and it's on Game Pass as well. It's worth your time. And so here's one I'm sure people are going to disagree with, but I have the 2020 Battletoads game. Now I will preface and say that I love the older Battletoads games despite their insane, like truly insane difficulty, I still think they're some of the most original beat em ups around and they're actually quite fun even nowadays and so when they announced a new one, I was decently excited for it. Sure, it wasn't Battletoads for the Wii and it wasn't in 3D, but any rare property coming back is honestly a good thing, I mean they came back before Conquer. And so then it came out and I actually didn't play it. Yeah, I just totally forgot. I mean, 2020 was a pretty busy year, but I played it a few years later on Game Pass and went, yeah, I actually like this. But after looking up just general reception of the game, it turns out I might be in a minority of people who actually like this game. People really did not like this game from the moment it was announced. And like the biggest point of contention is the game's presentation. They didn't like the art style. They don't like how it looks like a cartoon and they want something either 3D or gritty and realistic. And you know, while I'd love to see something gritty and realistic and grotesque, I like the art style. Do I think it's like the coolest art style ever and my preferred aesthetic for the Battletoads series? No, but I can still appreciate what this game has. I mean, it looks pretty different from most games on the market, let alone most games put out by Xbox Game Studios where things are a bit homogenized, I'm not gonna lie. It has a unique aesthetic and good animation. The sound is incredible for this game also. All of the sound effects are really great. I think the voice acting is pretty decent and the music, ooh, the music is so good in this game. There's a bunch of amazing remixes of old Battletoads themes themes and some good original stuff in there. The soundtrack is super underrated to this game. I think the presentation as a whole is pretty good, which certainly seems to be a point of contention when talking about this game. Aside from that though, I think the gameplay in this game is actually pretty solid. It isn't crazy different from the older Battletoads games. A majority of the gameplay is a beat-em-up and sure, it's not the most advanced beat-em-up. There's not a ton of combos or strings, you can't juggle the shit out of the enemies, it's not as in-depth as say the Double Dragon beat em up games, but it still is a good time, it's still satisfying and there are some cool moves you can pull off. The other thing is, not all of the gameplay is beat em up action, there's actually a decent amount of variety here, like when you get on the speeder, 
or when you have to solve puzzles or do platforming or like a shoot 'em up section, there's actually a good amount of variety here. They're really mixing things up like every hour. It's not the longest game, but it's a varied experience. Do all of the gameplay styles hit? No, not all of them hit. Some of them are clearly better than others. I'd say the beat 'em up sections are my favorite, and some of the puzzle segments, yeah, I didn't really care for these, but they're not absolutely awful. They're not game breaking. It's not to the point where I'm like, oh, this game's awful because of the puzzle segments. No, they're just not my favorite parts of the game. Oh, and the difficulty's not insane like the old games. It's just decently challenging. But I think the gameplay was enjoyable for the most part. It's also fully playable in co-op like the original. That's pretty cool. The game actually has a relatively fleshed out story and I think it's fine. It's really about the Battletoads trying to reclaim their former glory. And yeah, at times it can come off as a little cringe and unfunny, but I mean, there's a few parts that made me laugh. The writing wasn't absolutely atrocious, it's certainly not going to win any awards and I can see why some people didn't like it, but I mean, it's not terrible. At the end of the day, you're playing as some roided out toads beating the shit out of stuff and as long as that's good, the game's going to be good. And I think it is good. Is it the best beat em up I've ever played? Is it one of the best modern beat em ups? Probably not, but it still is a good mindless few hours. And here we have another game that people are probably not going to agree with me about, but that's okay, it's my list. You can let me know why you disagree down below. I have DMC Devil May Cry. And just to clarify, maybe you're not watching the footage, this is the edgy DMC reboot that came out by Ninja Theory. I actually like this game and think it's a pretty decent to good hack and slash. Do I think it's better than the old Devil May Cry games? Do I think this should have been the future of DMC? abso freaking lootly not. No way. I would rather play any other DMC over this except for two, but I still think this is a good hack and slash that really gets overhated at this point. People just were not ready to like this game from the moment it was announced because we wanted Devil May Cry 5. We didn't want whatever this is, but now that we've gotten Devil May Cry 5, it's a lot easier to look back and go, yeah, this game was actually pretty decent. Sure, it is very, very different from legit any of the other Devil May Cry games tonally, gameplay-wise, and especially how Dante looks and acts. I'll be the first to admit the writing, the characters, the dialogue, and the story, yeah, it's not exactly the best, not even for DMC, but I mean, it got a good laugh out of me. Okay, yeah, it kind of sucks, but if you look past that, you have a decently engaging character action game. I will say something that has always stuck out to me, for the better I might add, is the game's visuals. I love how this game looks and how it just goes wild with its environments. Like, I think the visuals are great. They were great when it released and it looks very good nowadays and incredibly unique. And the frame rate was super smooth throughout. The character designs, yeah, I could do without these, but the environments look really great. But when it comes to the core gameplay, yes, it is a character action game that has the DMC name, but it doesn't play exactly like the older DMC games. It doesn't have as much depth as DMC 3, 4, and 5. There's not a bunch of different styles you can switch between. There's not just this endless moveset Dante has, but... What we have here I still think is pretty good. There actually still is a decent amount of depth. You can get some really crazy combos going on and the game at times is still challenging. It's not as difficult as Devil May Cry 1 or 3, but it challenged me more than the older God of Wars. I think the combat's actually pretty fun. The one thing I will say that I don't like though is the enemies that you have to hit with specific angelic or demonic moves. I always thought this was kind of stupid and it's really my least favorite part of the gameplay. That and you couldn't originally lock onto enemies, but the re-release for like PS4 and Xbox One you can lock on to enemies and yeah it's quite a bit better. I really do think the combat is good here. I think the level design is actually pretty good. Sure it is relatively straightforward but there are some nooks and crannies. The puzzles and platforming yeah it's just kind of there. I wouldn't say this is fun, engaging, or challenging but I mean it breaks up the pace right? There's at least a little bit of variety here. The game's got decent pacing. It's got a good length to it and I think it's incredibly replayable. Something else that is absolutely to the game's favor is that it's not the last DMC game. People, again, wanted a real follow-up to 4. And now that we have it, I think we can all appreciate this game a bit more. Sure, it's not the best Devil May Cry game, and it's a really strange direction the series took, but I still think it was a good game. And so here's a game that just never got enough love, in my opinion. That is Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2, and I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, Tubular, what is this list? You're talking about DMC and Battletoads and Plants vs. Zombies? Seriously, how about you talk about some good games? This is a good game. This is not the Plants vs. Zombies your little nephew plays on the iPad for three hours. This is totally different from those Plants vs. Zombies games. This is actually a class-based third-person shooter. 
and a great one at that. I know nowadays there are plenty of hero shooters and live service, multiplayer centric games, but this came out before all of that shit. It even came out before Overwatch, and I remember playing the shit out of this game actually in 2016. Did I play it all that much after Overwatch came out? No, but I still can look back on this game and go, that was actually pretty good and way better than it should have been. I do not see like anybody talking about this game these days. I don't even see the Plants vs. Zombies community really talking about it anymore either. It seems to be one of those more forgotten multiplayer games from the mid-2010s. There was actually a successor to this game, Battle for Neighborville, but I don't think that game is anywhere near as good. So what actually made this game even any good to begin with? Well, with it being a class-based shooter, you expect all of the classes to be relatively different from each other, and they absolutely were. They were incredibly unique from each other with a bunch of different abilities and playstyles. There's also a good amount of classes to begin with. There's a good amount of maps here that are all decently different from each other and then there's just a ton of game modes. Like we'd be here all day if I explained all these game modes. There's like upwards of 20 different game modes in this game. How many other multiplayer games have 20 different game modes that are all different from each other? I can't think of many. There's like something to cater to everyone's playstyle and then they imported like everything from the first game. The original game was good too, I played it back when it came out, but this game really expands on everything and again, they brought everything over. There's no reason to play the original game now. There's even single player content now, yeah, this game was just full of content and it's pretty impressive even nowadays just how much content this game had. Is there all that many people playing it? To be honest, I'm not really so sure I haven't played it in a good while. But with how good this multiplayer gameplay was, I have a feeling it's one of those games that will just kind of live on forever. There won't exactly be a lot of people playing it, but there'll be a dedicated, passionate fan base, and that's all I can really hope for at this point. It was better than Battle for Neighborville. That game just did not have the modes and the gameplay to back it up. The gameplay is so good in this game. All of the plants feel super nice. They're different from each other. It's incredibly polished. It's actually decently balanced. And above all else, it's just some really fun team-based gameplay. Like, outside of Team Fortress, I can't think of many class-based games I've had a ton of fun with, but this game, oh, it absolutely ranks up there. The aesthetic's also great, they really take advantage of the Plants vs. Zombies look, and it's a really nice-looking game that, sadly, might be lost to time in the future. But if you played it back then, or even over the last few years, then you know. You know just truly how good this game is, microtransaction bullshit and all and it's easily my favorite of the Plants vs. Zombies games. And so here's a good game that's gotten a good amount of love, but I still feel like it hasn't gotten enough appreciation. That is Mafia Definitive Edition. Now, I could argue that the entire Mafia series is rather underrated, but today we're just sticking to Definitive Edition. This is a complete remake for the original game, and I believe it to be one of the best remakes ever. Like, they faithfully recaptured that original game's magic, brought it into the modern era, and made it way better. The original game was good, but it was incredibly clunky and brutally difficult at times. This game, yeah, it just makes it a lot better in really every aspect. The story's basically untouched because it was already great for the time. It's a fantastic story about the mob. And actually, that's all I'm gonna say, because I don't want to spoil a single thing about the story since it is one of the best aspects of the game. The writing is solid, the characters are likable and entertaining, you'll get attached to them, you'll actually really want to see what happens in the ending. Oh, it's as explosive as you'd expect. I really do enjoy the story to this game, but the gameplay is so, so much better than the original game. It basically takes Mafia 3's gameplay and dumps it into Mafia 1. It is not an open world, there's like this open area you can drive around in, but it is not an open world. There's no side missions, it's actually incredibly linear, and the city's really used as a backdrop, and I thought this was unique then, it's even more unique now. Like, this is just a breath of fresh air. I don't need every single game to be super big and open. I appreciate the linear structure in the city. L.A. Noir did this as well. But L.A. Noir actually had side missions. This game, there's some collectibles and that's really it. A majority of the gameplay is driving around the city or getting into combat. I think the driving is good, the cars feel nice and the city is decently designed. And then the combat, yeah, it really is Mafia 3's combat, and that game has a ton of issues, but the combat was not something I ever had an issue with. I thought it was good. I think it's very good here. The cover base mechanics are good, the shooting feels nice, all of the weapons feel great, it's incredibly raw and visceral, the melee combat's even decent. The game is still somewhat challenging, but it's not stupidly difficult like the original. There's a bunch of interesting different set pieces, and the game has a ton of variety. Sure, it's not the longest campaign you'll play, taking probably under 10 hours, but it's incredibly varied, entertaining, 
And there's like no filler here, all of the missions are good, the story and the pacing doesn't ever drag, and it's one of those games that you'll want to beat in a sitting or two just because you'll get so engaged with the characters and the story and what's happening, at least that's how it was for me. I beat the game in like two sittings and I loved it, I thought the game was great. And hey, if you think the game's too easy and not as hard as the original, they even included a difficulty mode to make it as hard as the original. I didn't fuck around with that, I was happy I could get past the soapbox car racing, I hated that shit in the original. And with this remake out, you're not going to hear me recommend the original to a single person. Not one. Oh yeah, and then the presentation is pretty great also. I mean, it's a remake, you'd expect it to look a little better, but it's a really good looking game. The city's really detailed, the character models are good, the voice acting's good, the music, very timely. I enjoy the music, the presentation as a whole, really swell. Look, overall, this is just a really well-made game that I think is worth your time, especially if you like crime drama games, and I feel like it just never fully broke into the mainstream. Not like some of its contemporaries, and that's why it's here on the list. Alright, so here's a game you probably weren't expecting, and that is Cult of the Lamb. Now, Cult of the Lamb did actually sell pretty well, especially for an indie game, and there was a ton of hype for it when it came out, but even a few months later, I feel like... There was barely anyone talking about it, and eventually it just got kind of designated as like a meme game, no thanks to the Twitter account going nuts. But taking a step back and ignoring the crazy Cult of the Lamb Twitter account and all the memes and jokes about it, this is actually one of the most unique gameplay experiences I've had in the last few years, and I think it's absolutely worth playing if you haven't tried it at this point. Like, it's still pretty crazy to me just how different this game is from any other game on the market. It's a roguelike dungeon crawler fused with like this Animal Crossing villain management life sim? I don't even know how to describe it, there's just not really many games like it outside of, I guess, other cult simulator games, but as the title implies, you are a lamb and you run a cult, and that gets taken to the fullest. You have to recruit new members, you have to take care of them, you have to meet their needs, you want to brainwash them, you want them to do your bidding, like, you really actually get to run a full-ass cult here with a bunch of animals, and it's adorable. The game has a delightful art style and aesthetic, the music's great, it's just very cute all around, like, aw, who's getting locked up for re-education? Yes, you are, little doggy. Who's getting shit thrown in his face? Who's being forced to eat poop? Aww. Seriously though, the cult management gameplay is way more fun than it has any right to be. Taking care of your cult members, taking care of the village, making sure you have resources, having them pray to you, leveling up the cult and the area in general, and locking more stuff for them. It's an incredibly rewarding, addicting gameplay loop, and I found myself way more invested in this management style of gameplay than the dungeon crawling gameplay. But the dungeon crawling gameplay is good. It's nothing too out of the ordinary, it is just kind of a hack and slash or beat em up where you go through a bunch of randomly generated dungeons and at times it can actually get decently challenging, but I wouldn't say it's like exceptional gameplay, it's just good to great. That cult management gameplay though, ooh, it is so good, but legit, the way it all just comes together feels so unique and different from any other game on the market, and I wouldn't be surprised if in the future, bigger AAA games use a similar kind of management style of gameplay. It might even be innovative in that sense. Sure, all of this management gameplay is pretty chill, but then you go into the dungeon and it becomes this somewhat tense, challenging dungeon crawler, and I just really like the dichotomy of these two gameplay styles. What I'm trying to say, is the game is totally worth your time. It's not just some stupid weird little meme game that gets a bunch of furries excited on Twitter. There's actually a really good, lovingly made game that is absolutely worth your time. It's still even getting updates. They're adding co-op to it in the future. And so if you haven't tried it at this point, well, I think maybe you should change that. You won't regret it. And so here we have Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. I know you're probably like, seriously, you have a Final Fantasy game on the list? Well, hear me out. I think this game is actually relatively underappreciated. I've even underappreciated it in the past, and going back and looking at what this game offers, I think it's way better than it had any right to be. Does it have issues? Yes. It is a flawed game, and I can see why some people didn't really care for it. That being said, I actually really did like it. So the game is actually a prequel to the original Final Fantasy on NES, and the story in particular has always been something I know people don't really care for, but I actually like the story. Is it goofy? Is it stupid? Is it hilarious? Absolutely, but the ending really does make it all worth it. It's one of those stories that it kinda comes together at the end, like it's so bad that it's good. There are plenty of dumbass cutscenes in this game, but despite how stupid all of it gets and just how thrown together the story feels, 
It's not awful, it's kind of one of Team Ninja's better stories, which is really sad actually. Look, I didn't hate it. I know that some people really hated the story to this game. They saw Jack talking about chaos and chaos this and that and the game's tone and were just like, what even is this? This isn't Final Fantasy, this is stupid. And yeah, I could see why you'd think that, but I like it. But enough about that. What I think makes this game underappreciated is the combat. At first glance, the combat really isn't anything all that special. It's just another Team Ninja Souls like, you know, it's not that different from Neo and Wolong, but I realize now that there is actually a ton of depth to this combat, way more than you might even realize. Not only is there a bunch of different weapons with completely different movesets, but as you play through the game, the combat really opens up and it's incredibly customizable. You can have so many different movesets and switch between weapons and there's actually a ton of variety and depth here that I didn't even realize the first time I played through this game. Like I thought it was good but not great, it wasn't until I had just a ton of comments flood in roasting me saying I didn't really explore the combat to the fullest and yeah it does take a bit of time before the combat really opens up but once it does it is some of the best souls like combat you will find again there's actually just a ton of depth combos weapons move sets abilities like it's really cool the game's also incredibly replayable it's satisfying and I think most of the missions are good. Not every mission, and the side missions are very cookie cutter and bland, but the level design, while it is rather straightforward and simplistic, it's fine. It's not offensive and it isn't super dull and annoying like Rise of the Ronin. I'd much rather take this straightforward level design than what Team Ninja's done after. And then there's a nice Final Fantasy flair thrown over everything, like you fight Final Fantasy enemies and it's dark and edgy, and I actually think this is pretty cool. Maybe it's just a little edgy boy in me, but I dig this game's aesthetic and atmosphere and just how it looks. I fuck with the vibes, you know what I'm saying? There's also some really good remixes here. This game is clearly not for everybody. I know plenty of people didn't like it when it came out or nowadays, but I think this is one of those games that is absolutely worth giving a second chance to and really exploring the combat to the fullest. I think it's some of the best Souls-like combat out there. I know plenty of people who have put well over 100 hours into this game, which I initially thought, you serious? But after trying it again, I mean, I could kind of see it. I still think Neo 2 is better, but this is a pretty good Souls-like that just doesn't get enough love. And so here's a game that I recently finished that kind of inspired this entire list, and that is Evil West. Now, I didn't play this on release, I only just now played it because it finally came to Game Pass, but was pleasantly surprised. This game was a ton of fun, and it felt like a throwback to older character action games, akin to like the 360 PS3 era. Taking place in the Wild Wild West, not featuring Will Smith, it sees us playing as this cowboy named Jesse and going up against, well, I'll just say some evil shit. The story, and the characters, and the writing, and the dialogue. Yeah, it's definitely this game's biggest weakness. I just didn't really care for the story. I didn't really care about the characters. I just kind of wanted to move on and go shoot the next big creature. Like, maybe I'm in the minority there, but I just didn't really care for the story. What really hooked me with this game was the gameplay. The gameplay is excellent. It really is a mix of a third-person shooter and a character action game. You actually have a pretty robust moveset where you can just beat the absolute shit out of stuff. You can teleport all around. You have a bunch of different weapons to use and as you play through the game you unlock more and more gadgets and abilities and the combat really just becomes this sandbox. There's so many different ways you can kill shit in this game and it's all incredibly fun. Beating the shit out of stuff feels incredibly satisfying. There's so many different ways to do it and then when you pull out the guns it's just as good as well. There's a bunch of combos, there's super moves that use like this energy gauge. You can even juggle enemies like the combat actually has a lot of legs here and it really was a lot of fun. Sure, when you start the game it isn't really advanced at all and it feels incredibly basic and I'm sure some people played this and went this combat's so basic and lame but all I can say is trust me put in even like two or three hours the combat really opens up and becomes something special the level design is pretty straightforward and basic but there are some secrets here and there and at the very least there are some good set pieces there's even some really great boss fights the game has a solid pace throughout you go to a bunch of different environments and a decent amount of enemy types is it some of the best combat I've experienced in a recent game? No, but it was still a lot of fun. 
and I was thoroughly hooked. I didn't want to play anything else. I was just like, man, I want to get back to Evil West. That game's hella fun, and the game isn't super long either, so it actually becomes pretty replayable. It's maybe seven to ten hours long. I mean, if you skip the cutscenes, it's probably like five or six hours long. And so, if you have Game Pass, I think it really is worth trying this game, especially if you like older character action games or older third-person shooters. I think you're going to pick up what this game puts down. It's clearly not for everybody, and I think a lot of people wrote it off as just kind of this cheesy, forgettable spaghetti western that might have decent combat, but I think the combat alone makes this game worth playing. Everything else is decent enough. I mean, the presentation's actually very good, but that combat, ooh, that is why I kept coming back to this game. Just pummeling the shit out of stuff it felt really good. I think I might also possibly be a disturbed individual, but that's besides the point. And so our last game is one of my favorite games of the last few years, and that is Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. I have talked about this game so many times at this point, but I'm going to talk about it again because I do think it is underappreciated. I think a lot of the people that played it really did enjoy it, but the reason I think this game is underappreciated is because it's clearly inspired by Jet Set Radio, from the aesthetic to the music to the gameplay, but What's crazy is that, in my opinion, this is better than Jet Set Radio. Legit, I think this is a better game than Jet Set Radio and Future. Sure, it's not as iconic, it doesn't have the iconic characters, and the music, yeah, it might not be better than Jet Set Radio's, it's still up in the air, but when it comes to the core gameplay, yes, I think this is way better than Jet Set Radio. I think the areas are incredibly well designed, the game is a blast to control, the moveset's great, doing tricks is better, even the combat's better. Like, when it comes to the gameplay, I really do think it excels over Jet Set Radio, which is crazy. I love Jet Set Radio. When it comes to the story, yeah, it's decent enough. I don't think it's as iconic or memorable as Jet Set Radio's. Jet Set might have it beat, but the characters are at least pretty distinct. I mean, the visuals are certainly distinct. There is, like, no other game on the market that looks like this. I mean, I feel like I've said that a few times, but you tell me how many games look like this outside of Hover that, you know, have been released in the last 15 years. I love this game's aesthetic, and the sound soundtrack is excellent. I'm regularly still listening to the soundtrack. That is no cap. Like, I am still regularly listening to the soundtrack. Like, it is living rent-free up in my head, and that is fine with me. I just absolutely adored this game. It has a great pace to it. I expect to play through it once a year, just like how I used to do with Jet Set Radio, because I really do just want to get back to it. There's also a bunch of crazy mods now, and it just seems to be getting better and better. I hope in the future we do get a sequel, because this Ooh, it was such a good time, honestly. I won't be here forever. I've talked about this game enough times. I'll just say that if you've ever had any interest in Jet Set Radio, like at all, play this game. Find some way to play this game. You will not regret it. Some of the most fun I've had in the last few years of gaming, and it's of no surprise to me that it's from an indie game. All right, that's it for today's video. We're going to wrap things up. Hope it was what you were looking for. Today's code word is hot because it's getting really hot and steamy in my room and I want to go outside and get some fresh air. So if you comment the word hot, you're going to get a heart from me. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Hope you all stay safe. Merry Christmas, y'all. Bye bye now.